Something strange happened during the summer of 1814, and it changed the world as we know it. August 24th and 25th, 1814. Two days that would forever change the course of American history. As tension simmered between the young United States and Great Britain, a series of weather events would unleash fury upon the nation's capital that had never been seen before. Quote, I remember like it was yesterday. The sky turned black and the wind started to howl like a pack of wolves. Then, all of a sudden, it was like the whole world was being torn apart. The British had been advancing on the city for weeks, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. They burned the White House, the Capitol Building, and the Library of Congress. But as they prepared to launch the final attack, they were met with a force they never expected. On the night of August 24th, a tornado swept through the Chesapeake Bay, destroying the British fleet, preventing them from launching their attack on Washington, D.C. 16 British ships were destroyed and hundreds of troops were killed and injured. The winds were so strong that soldiers were picked up and thrown through the air like ragdolls. It was total chaos. The storm that hit Washington DC on August 24th was one of the most powerful storms on record. It was a rare combination of a tornado that spawned off of a hurricane that caused the unprecedented damage. The destruction that was caused by the storm was staggering. Trees were uprooted, buildings were destroyed, and lives were lost. Quote, the tornado was a game changer for the War of 1812. It was a stroke of luck for the Americans and a major setback for the British. It disrupted their plans and inflicted significant damage on their fleet, making it impossible for them to launch a full-scale attack on Washington, D.C. One witness said, quote, I was there when the storm hit. The wind was so strong it felt like it was going to rip the ship apart. We were tossed around like ragdolls, and many soldiers were killed or injured in the chaos. According to sources, the tornado destroyed several British ships, including a number of transport vessels and gunboats. It's worth noting that the British fleet in the river was already experiencing significant difficulties before the tornado struck. The fleet had been delayed and damaged by American forces and was running low on supplies and reinforcements. According to some sources, the tornado caused significant damage to the British fleet, sinking several ships and forcing others to run aground. Historians record this storm as the Great Barbados Hurricane of 1814. Elizabeth Black was just a young girl when the storm hit, and she said, quote, I remember it like it was yesterday. The sky turned black and the wind started howling like a pack of wolves. And then, all of a sudden, it was like the whole world was being torn apart. While the storm destroyed many of the British ships that were anchored in the river, it's estimated that hundreds to over a thousand British troops were killed or injured. The loss was a major blow to the British invasion force, but what happened the following day would force them to retreat from the city and abandon their plans to invade Baltimore. The eyewitness accounts from the storm are terrifying. One account comes from British Admiral Sir George Cockburn, who was leading one of the British invasion forces. He wrote in his journal, quote, the wind was so violent and the rain so heavy that it was impossible for a man or horse to keep his feet." End quote. Another witness, Joshua Barney, recalled, quote, We saw the wind coming down the river, a column of blackness, bending and twisting everything before it. The storm that descended upon the fleet was a monster. With winds that were estimated to be over 200 miles per hour, the British ships were battered by waves that rose over 12 feet high and some were even lifted out of the water and smashed onto the shore. One ship, the HMS Avon, was driven aground and destroyed with over 100 men lost. The British fleet was devastated by these tornadoes. However, what was about to come the following day would be the final nail in the coffin. The British had been advancing on the city for weeks, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. They burned the White House, the Capitol Building, and the Library of Congress. But as they prepared to launch the final attack, they were met with a force they never expected. The conditions on August 25th were ripe for severe weather. The combination of heat and humidity caused a very unstable atmosphere, and the storm that was about to develop would shock everybody. As the second storm moved into Washington, D.C., strong winds and torrential rain started to appear. Then something more unusual happened. Witnesses reported seeing what appeared to be a tornado. A slave named Michael Shiner wrote this in his diary, quote, The wind was like nothing I'd ever felt before. 
It was like a giant hand, just grabbing everything in its path and tossing it aside. I saw houses lift off their foundations and trees snapped like twigs. According to other sources, the winds tore the roofs off at the general post office and the patent office buildings. Trees were uprooted, many buildings were damaged and destroyed. And while this was happening, the torrential rain was putting out the fires that the British lit the night before. The impact of the storms of the people of Washington, D.C. was also significant. Many were left homeless and without shelter, and the city was in ruins. But, despite the destruction from the tornado and from the British, they rebuilt the city. The storms of August 24th and August 25th, 1814, were not only a defining moment in the history of the United States, but also a reminder of the power of nature and how these natural events can change the course of history forever. Just think about it. What would happen if these two tornadoes never happened? Would the British have completed their plunder and burning of Washington, D.C. and finished off the American army in Baltimore? Would the War of 1812 been won by the British, turning the new independent country of America into a defeated force ripe for plundering? Was this powerful storm the only reason why America is what it is today? Some historians say yes. In 2010, award-winning science writer and editor Sarah Zelinsky wrote this about the matter in the Smithsonian Magazine, quote, On the night of August 24, 1814, British troops led by Rear Admiral Sir George Cockburn marched on Washington, D.C. and set fire to most of the city. Dolly Madison famously saved the Gilbert Stuart portrait of George Washington and a copy of the Declaration of Independence before she fled to nearby Georgetown. The British didn't stay long, though. Their occupation lasted just 26 hours. What happened? Current Washingtonians will recognize this scenario, as we've had a wild summer of heavy heat and damaging storms. But August 25th, 1814 was even worse. The day of the invasion had been hot, 100 degrees, with much of the city aflame the next day. British soldiers kept moving through, lighting more fires. They didn't notice the darkening skies and the thunder and lightning. City residents knew a bad storm was on its way and quickly took shelter. The British, though, had no idea how bad a D.C. storm could get. The clouds began to swirl and the winds kicked up. A tornado formed in the center of the city and headed straight for the British on Capitol Hill. The twister ripped buildings from their foundations and trees up by the roots. British cannons were tossed around by the winds. Several British troops were killed by falling structures and flying debris. The rain continued for two hours, dousing the flames. The British decided it was time to leave. Local meteorologists wrote in their book, Washington Weather, quote, As the British troops were preparing to leave, a conversation was noted between the British Admiral and a Washington lady regarding the storm. The Admiral exclaimed, Great God, Madame, is this the kind of storm to which you are accustomed in this infernal country? The lady answered, No, sir. This is a special interposition of providence to drive our enemies from our city. The Admiral replied, Not so, Madame. It is rather to aid your enemies in the destruction of your city. Was the Admiral right? Or did the storm stop the British rampage? President Madison returned to the city on August 27, and peace between the two nations was signed the next year. Though, Congress briefly considered abandoning Washington and making a capital somewhere else. The city was eventually rebuilt. Tornadoes are rare in D.C., which makes the 1814 incident even more amazing. Three struck that day in 1814. They may have all been the same one, though, and only seven others have been reported since. The most recent occurred in 1995. It whipped through the National Arboretum. The damage was limited to uprooted trees, end quote. You might have noticed something about this article. They failed to mention the previous night's tornado outbreak in the river, the one that destroyed the fleet of British ships. Now, if you combine both of these events, one in the nighttime and then one the next day, you can see how this event can be classified as strange. In fact, the show Ancient Aliens even did a little segment on this event and suggested that it was UFOs and aliens that caused the tornadoes in order for America to become what it is today. But somehow I doubt that. But some ancient alien theorists believe that perhaps this was a UFO encounter. That it was an extraterrestrial. But what do you think? Write it down in the comments section. Let me know what you think about this. Did these tornadoes change the course of history forever? Or was it aliens, as the History Channel suggests? I want to thank you all for watching this video. And until next time, God bless you all.